So these are hog ring pliers with a longer handle and they'll work for a nine gauge hog ring. Preferably without gloves. So they'll work for a nine gauge hog ring or 11 gauge. They have little divots in them that hold the hog ring there. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put the hog ring in one side of each divot. What's gonna hold the hog ring is this spring right here. Now, did you know there's a hack? Let me tell you about the hack. Should you not have that spring, what's something else you can do? Take a rubber band and loop it around a few times and use that as a spring. The advantage of having the spring is look, look it holds the hog ring for me. Some people don't like that. Let's show you another thing. So if you take your pliers, pop that spring out of one side. So if you don't like the spring, you can just go back to a standard set of hog ring pliers or you can flip your pliers over and see now we're turning that spring and we are going to put it in the opposite direction. What that spring is gonna do now is it's gonna pinch the hog ring pliers open. So now that spring will pinch them open. It's not gonna hold the hog ring in there for you because if you let go, that spring is gonna open them. So when you compress your hog ring, that spring is gonna reopen them so that you don't have to open them. Right now, the only reason that that hog ring is staying in there is because I'm compressing it with my hand. I'll put it back to how it originally was. So now how to use hog ring pliers. What you're gonna do is you're gonna open them up and you're gonna put your hog ring in there. And what they're gonna do is they're designed or intended to join two pieces of metal together. We use it in the fencing industry to attach the tension wire to the chain link fence. There's a lot more uses beyond the fencing world that use them. What we're gonna use it for is attaching this piece of tension wire to this chunk of chain link. So right now, this piece of wire is free. We're gonna put it across the top of the tension wire, put it underneath the chain link, and once it is crossing both pieces of wire, we're gonna compress it and close the hog ring. This piece of wire is attached to the chain link. The only way to open that hog ring back up again is to cut it off. So we'll do that again over here. As the hog ring is open, slide it over both pieces of wire. Take your hand, compress it. As you squeeze it, it closes the hog ring. Hog rings are a one-time use deal. Once they're closed, there is no way to reuse them or reopen them. The only way to open them is to cut them off. How can you cut off hog rings? You can cut them off with a pair of side cutters, maybe Klein side cutters. Uh, you can cut them off with a grinder with a cutoff wheel. You can cut them off with a pair of, pair of bolt cutters. A pair of bolt cutters is usually pretty safe, and then that way you can always get right on it and there's no sparks or no nothing. I would recommend bolt cutters. That's the easiest way. So here I have two different pairs of hog ring pliers, both of what we carry. As far as these, the, the handles are longer and give you more leverage to compress that hog ring because it is a nine gauge hog ring, or even for the 11 gauge hog ring, versus these. So you can see that these are probably have about a four inch handle. They're, when they're fully opened, well one, they don't have that spring, so note that. There's no spring here. Let me move my hand. Here, check out that spring. No, you can't because my hand's in the way. There you go. Since these are shorter, they're gonna be a lot harder to compress. The longer the handle, the more leverage you have to compress that hog ring. If you're gonna compress about like a thousand of these in a day or more, your hand's gonna get really, really tired. This is an 11 gauge hog ring and I can do it with one hand. Now, if I wanted to do it with a nine gauge, just see how far I have to open them just to be able to get that hog ring in there. I can do it, but it takes both hands and I almost poked my eye out. So yeah, these are far better. <laughs> Even also notice that the, the indentation to hold the hog ring in these two pliers, just a comparison. This particular set of pliers has a lot more of an indentation so that hog ring doesn't go flying or uh, fall out. One of the worst things 
is when that hog ring slips and you compress it and accidentally pinch your hand or your finger, it really hurts. So these, I would recommend these, and there is other options. You can get a, uh, a, longer, a longer set with a magazine, and you can put a magazine of hog rings in there, and I think they come in about a set of 25, the ones that I'm thinking of. You can also do pneumatic guns. The options are, are way out there as far as what kind of hog rings you can do. These are the ones that we like, these are the ones we use, and these are the ones that we recommend if you're gonna do it by hand. These are heavy duty. They're, they have the spring, and you can make the spring hold them closed or hold them open. They have the longer handles, so they're a lot easier to use, a lot easier to grasp, and a lot easier to compress to compress that nine gauge hog ring. That's what I have to show you. Dan with SWI, thanks for checking out Gadget Corner, and hope you enjoyed the video. You have a good dang day. So if you're paranoid about losing your wallet, you know, and you want that nice, you want that nice chain that goes from your belt loop down to your wallet, why buy one? You can make one. All you need is some hog rings and some hog ring pliers. You can even, uh, you know, attach it to your, to your belt loop. Uh, the other thing you can do with the hog rings is you can, uh, it's on there. It's on there for good now. In the workplace is you can even go around, you know, and put hog rings on people's belt loops. I mean, I would never recommend doing something like that because that's just kind of funny.